some of the minor characters in this novel are the two knitting women uh, they do not play uh, any part in the action of the novel but they are important in a symbolic sense uh, the elder one of the two seems to marlow to know everything about everybody including himself uh, and he thinks of the elder woman as one who possesses supernatural powers uh so the two together seem to him to be guarding the door of darkness and uh marlow sees them as uh, causing some uh, kind of a bad omen for him uh for the voyage that he is going to undertake there is of course marlow's aunt who is described by marlow as a dear enthusiastic soul it is she who is instrumental in getting marlow a job in the service of a belgian trading company uh she expresses the view that the white men who visit the interior of any dark country do a great service to the natives because they have a civilizing effect on these ignorant and backward people marlow does not share this view and he says that women live in a world of their own a world which is divorced from the stark realities of life next we have the company's doctor he is not an ordinary member of the medical profession he is a physician come psychologist he not only examines the health of marlow but also measures the skulls of uh, of marlow the skull of marlow whom he examines for admission to the company's service He is interested in studying the effects of the climate and the environment of the African countries upon the minds of the visiting Europeans. He speaks to Marlow half jokingly and half earnestly. Thus, uh, he is quite an interesting man. This uh, now we come to the company's chief accountant. He keeps his account books in perfect order. and that he maintains a neat and tidy personal appearance marlow finds him flawlessly and neatly dressed in the midst of the squalor and the sordid surroundings marlow thinks it is a great achievement on the part of this man to dress so well in this environment however this man strikes us as being partly a comic figure because of his continuing to dress himself nicely even though it is not at all necessary for him to do so at the place where he lives so his starched collar white cuffs snowy trousers and varnished boots seem to be out of tune with his surroundings the manager of the central station comes next he is a self important man who does not even ask marlow to take a seat when marlow appears before him first after his 20 mile walk that day Marlow tells us that the manager inspired neither love nor fear nor respect in anybody and that he inspired only unquote uh, uneasiness uh, in people Marlow further says that there was nothing within this man the manager had neither learning nor intelligence but he does have ambition he feels jealous of Mr Coots because he thinks that Mr Coots might one day supersede him and rise to the topmost position uh next we come to some insignificant characters like the brickmaker the manager's boy servant the manager's uncle and next uh there is the russian who uh, looks like a clown because of the multicolored clothes which he wears he is an adventurer who travels to satisfy his spirit of adventure and also to gather knowledge he is a seasoned seaman and very fond of smoking tobacco with a preference for english tobacco This Russian is a great admirer of Mr Coots and he gives Marlow plenty of information about that man and that man's influence over the natives his devotion to Mr Coots is very touching indeed